Good morning, church. Good morning. Glad to see you here on this Palm Sunday. Can you tell the choir is ready to sing? Boy, you sounded good already. That was great. Uh, what a good day in God's house. And I, I, I came to the pulpit with a smile because if you were here last Sunday, I preached about getting hollow Easter bunnies on Easter. I got one. <laughs> Some little smarty got me one. I don't know that handwriting yet, but uh, I'll, tra I'll track you down. I'll track you down. <laughs> but thank you. All right. We are going to begin with a few announcements this morning. And uh, as we come together, we know God is going to bless us uh, today and through, especially this week that is to come as we prepare our hearts from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday to celebrate a Savior who came for you and for me and who came for the world. Amen? Amen? And we know that we're to serve Him and take the message that we hear here out there into the world. So this is a great week that we share together. Uh, there will be a senior luncheon at noon on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, April 4th. Here we are in April. Hard to believe that the year is slipping through, but uh, here we are in April. So that's this uh, coming Tuesday at noon. Uh, Steve Tyree will be the guest and the musician for that day. Uh, also, please take note of everything that's happening next week on Easter Sunday. Uh, we're going to have a sunrise service right here at 8 o'clock in the morning. 8.30, we will have breakfast together. 9.30, Sunday school together. 10.30, worship together. So next Sunday is a full Sunday uh, from 8 o'clock on through toward noontime as we fellowship a little bit together after Easter services. So please put that on your calendar. And also, what a great Sunday to invite somebody to come to church with you. Uh, if you know somebody in your life, in your family, uh, who needs to come to church next week, please do invite them to come be with us. We would love to have them. Uh, also, you will notice in your bulletin the InReach Committee, which I love the name of that committee. It's the first time in my career I've heard that name of that committee being the InReach Committee, but willing to assist uh, church members if you need transportation to doctor's appointments uh, or other special needs, uh, you can contact that committee. They will be, be glad to respond to you. Also, here's Pastor Glenn, and Pastor Glenn is going to be starting a grief support group uh, after Easter on Thursdays at 10 o'clock in the morning. So if you know of someone, uh, or perhaps you yourself, you need to be a part of the grief support group. Uh, that is certainly, an, an, a, again, an outreach from the church. It's not limited to the church family. Uh, and there are a lot of people in our lives who would benefit from a grief support group, perhaps a, a spouse that was lost within the last year, or whatever it may be. Uh, please invite them to that group. It would be a great outreach. And I know all about the grief support curriculum. It's, it's good. So, Glenn, I'm glad you're going to be conducting that class on Thursdays uh, after Easter, 10 o'clock in the morning. Also, I'm glad Ms. Ms. Nellie is here today because here's an announcement in the bulletin. And you'll notice this announcement's in bold print, so it must mean it's important. And that is, she is going to be having a 100th birthday party here on April 16th. If you'd like to bring some food, there's a sign up you'll see right here outside of the sanctuary. Uh, Sylvia Bradley will answer any questions you might have. The one question that I do have is what time is that birthday party? Right after worship service. So you can stay and celebrate. Uh, what a great celebration. Uh, and I look forward to that as well. Uh, if you're visiting today, we are certainly glad to have you. We want you to come back. Uh, and also, if you would, uh, just simply for the knowledge of the church, uh, we'd love for you to fill out that little tear off on your bulletin. Let us know you have been here to visit with us. We're so glad you are with us. One more announcement for the day I know, and that's Lisa. So, Lisa, I'm going to call on you to come uh, with that announcement. Good morning. Good morning. Just wanted to take a quick minute and um, just let you all know of something that a few of us have been doing um, since the fall. D. Floyd and Rhonda Hillsman and myself kind of got together back in the fall and we were talking after Sunday school several different times and found that we all were feeling kind of led or called to start really going out and, and sharing our faith with people in our community. So we talked about it, we prayed about it, 
and we kind of got together and we went out twice in October last year in the fall and then we've already gone out again once so far this spring and what we do is we we started with our community behind the church and we knock on doors and we go to the doors and we talk to people and um, we have cards that talk about the church and the church services and we're able to tell them in particular about special events that we're having and inviting them to special events. In October we had the trunk or treat for the children and when we went in the first part of March we had the ladies tea party and we had the children's Easter party that we could invite them to. And we would simply talk with people that would open the door and we would pray with them, we would pray for them, we would talk about any needs that they might have at that time. Is there anything that we or anybody here in the church could do to help them? And we have the phone number on the card that we give them and just told them that they could reach out to the church, that we're here in the neighborhood and that we really want to be able to, to help minister to them if we could and, and help them with anything. We've only done it three times, but we have found that people are really, really accepting they're very pleasant. We even had a person pray for us. <laughs> so that was different. They, she actually prayed for us and what we were doing. So I thought that was really kind of neat and really special for us. And we've learned that there are a lot of people out there that are hurting, that are lonely, and that they love just even 15 minutes of your time just to talk to somebody and see somebody. And, and um, we're surrounded by people that have needs. But all of us in the church have needs, so everybody around us has them too. So that brings us to my point, which is we'd like to invite anybody that feels so led to maybe join us. We don't have anything really staunch yet. It's not like, oh, we meet every month or we meet the first Monday or we do this or we do that. We are working it around our schedules, and two of us are still working, so we're actually doing Saturday mornings and we seem to be able to catch people at home. But um, we were just thinking that and praying that maybe if there were other people here that would like to join us, it would be great if we had a few more people because it would be really nice to be able to go back and touch base with the people that we've already talked to. You know, it's, it's not a one and done situation. You don't go to a door and invite people and talk to them about coming to church and knowing the Lord and never show up again. So it would give us the opportunity to really be able to, to start building relationships and start being intentional about what we're doing. Plus, it would help us to reach more people. So if anybody is interested, we would love to have you. Please see Dee or Rhonda or myself. And um, we will actually be coming back, you know, periodically and letting you know what we're doing and, and how we're doing and what's going on. So I, we would really appreciate it if you pray about it and if it's something that you feel led to do. We'd love to have you join us. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And as we prepare to worship, let me say that two announcements this morning really did fill out the ministry of the church. You have an in-reach committee, and you are to take care of yourselves, and you're to reach each other, especially when there are, time, there are times of need, times uh, that we just need to rally around our church members and give them support and encouragement. Uh, I'm grateful for in-reach. But as Lisa gave that announcement, you're also very much commissioned by the Lord to do outreach. You reach outside of the doors and you reach to your community and reach to our world. So I'm grateful for inreach and I'm grateful for outreach because that really does put the parameters of what the church is all about as we give the good news of Jesus Christ to a world that needs it very much so. So we're grateful to be together in God's house this morning. As we begin worship, I want you to repeat these words after me and give them, give them a little strength. These are from Psalm 30 uh, as we repeat them together. Lord my God, I cry to you for help. Lord my God, I cry to you for help. And you helped me. And you helped me. Sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. You his faithful ones. You his faithful ones. And praise his holy name. Weeping may stay overnight, but there is joy in the morning. And that certainly frames out what Jesus did for us. Weeping to the cross, but joy in the resurrection. Let's pray together. Our Father God today, we thank you that we are here to worship 
the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, that on this Palm Sunday we remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. We remember his broken body. We remember his spilled blood. And we will remember as we celebrate communion together today. But also, Lord, we are pointing forward to Easter Sunday morning, which will come next week, Father, as we celebrate together the resurrection of Jesus. Not only did he die to forgive us of sin, but our Savior is not a dead Savior. Our Savior is a living Savior who rose from the dead that those who are forgiven by Him might live with Him for all eternity. And so, Father, we thank You for that good news. I thank You that we reach inside of the church with that good news. And also, as we leave this place today, we are to reach outside of the church's walls that we might touch the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. And so today, Lord, we thank You for bringing us here. I pray a special blessing on every person who is here today as we worship You. Bless those who will hear this worship service on YouTube this week, Father. We ask that You will bless each person within earshot of my voice that they receive a special blessing from this service that we give to you. We love you, we thank you, and we are grateful to be in your house today in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing hymn number 217, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. come to the Lord to be a people of prayer in these moments. And we have prayer concerns. I know every heart today here carries at least one, probably more than one prayer concern. Let me mention just a couple. First of all, uh, for those of you who may not have heard this yet, Ed Hager lost his mother uh, this past week. Uh, and services are in arrangement right now, but times are, have already been set. So uh, the, the visitation for Ed's mother will be Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, at Driscoll Funeral Chapel in Amherst from 6 to 8. And then uh, the service for her will be Thursday at 11 o'clock at the chapel at Driscoll Funeral Home. So if you can be at one or both of those services or keep this family in prayer, please do so. 
Uh, also, we want to pray for Hilda Mayberry, who is home. Uh, we want to pray for the Harold Campbell family. I don't know. I think there's some connection with the church here. Uh, he was the building inspector in Amherst County for many years. His wife's name is Zelta. In fact, I was Zelta's pastor for a long time. But uh, Mr. Campbell passed away, so we want to remember that family. They were mentioned this morning in Sunday school. Uh, Aileen Young, we want to pray for her. She, of course, lost a sister, Dean. Beautiful service this past week for Dean. We want to pray for Aileen now and just ask God's blessing. She had a fall, uh, and she is going to, if she's not already there, she's going to Guggenheimer uh, in Lynchburg for uh, rehab. And then also, I see Rhonda is here today after surgery Thursday. Things went well, Rhonda. Our surgery went well. So both, both eyes are now done, and we're, we're grateful for that. Uh, it's good news. So I know that there are many other prayer concerns here today. So I'll give us a few moments of silence, and uh, you bring your own needs to the Lord, and then I'll join us together in prayer. So may we all pray together. Oh, Lord, our God, as we come before you this morning on Palm Sunday, we thank you, Father, for this week and what it means. This is in the Bible called the Passion Week of Jesus. And, Lord, we just thank you for the passion that ended on the cross, Lord, the, the concern and the desire for the world to know the face of God, to know the love of God, to know the forgiveness of God is embodied in Jesus Christ, the Son, the Son of God, part of the Trinity, who lived in eternity past, and as the first chapter of the Gospel of John tells us, not anything that was made was made outside of the presence of Jesus being there. And so, Father, we thank you that there came a time in God's timeline when the Son of God laid aside His robes of glory and came to take on flesh, to become a human being, to live among us, to teach us what it means to love God and what it means to love one another. Because truly, we cannot love our God until we understand that we love one another and we're to reach people. And by his definition, we reach out not only to the people we love and the people who are friends, but also the Bible teaches us that we're even to reach our enemies. And so, Lord, we know that your love in our hearts stretches us to grow in what it means to know you, what it means to love you, and what it means to love others. And so, Father, we thank you that you showed us what ultimate love is and that God himself in Jesus Christ, laid down his life on the cross, his body broken, and his blood shed, that we might be forgiven. He was punished in my place. Lord, in my human mind, I have a hard time just wrapping my mind around the truth that God himself died for me. A simple human being, a sinful human being. But I thank you that that is true. And it's not just true for me, it's true for every person of every nation of the world. From eternity came the Son of God, and to eternity will live the Son of God. And He wants us to live with Him in forgiveness and adopted as sons and daughters. So, Father, today I pray that You will bless us on this Palm Sunday that points us toward Easter Sunday and the celebration that not only did Jesus die on a cross, but He has risen from the dead to be a living Savior to us. And so, Lord, I pray that you bless us this morning. Thank you for letting us lift up our prayer concerns to you, Father. There are many, I know, that have come to you uh, from our hearts, from our unspoken, silent prayers. But thank you, Lord, that you hear every prayer concern, every prayer need. And not only do you hear, but you also answer. Father, we pray a special blessing on Ed Hager and the loss of his mom and all of his family. Lord, take care of Ed and Janice. Take care of all of this family, Father. Uh, as they prepare in these days to come in a service in which they will lay her in your arms. Thank you for the way that this family has taken care of her. Thank you, Father, that Ed has been so faithful to his mom. And I know this is a hard day for him and for family, so, Lord, we pray your blessing on them and take care of them in a special way. We pray a blessing on Ms. Mayberry, Lord, that you give her strength. We play, pray blessings on families uh, like Harold Camel's family that have experienced loss this week, Father. Uh, we pray for Ms. Aileen that you take care of her in therapy, Lord, and pray a, a special blessing on Rhonda as her eyes heal. And Father, we know that there are so many other prayer concerns. We lift them to you today. We thank you again that you not only hear, but you answer and you heal and you bless and you give strength where it is needed. Father, right in this moment, I pray a special blessing on the choir. We have a message of 
Easter to give this day, Father. And I thank you that we are here, that we might present it to our family in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray that there will be many others who will tune in this week by YouTube to hear this beautiful, precious music that gives glory and honor and blessing to the Savior. So, Lord, we love you. We thank you for the remainder of this service. We give it to you and ask your blessing on it. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Come on, Glenn. Well, as Pastor Glenn gets in place and all of us get ready, just want to say a word of thanks to Jessica and to the choir for allowing me to be a part. I've really enjoyed it. And as we present this cantata today, Living Hope, we're thankful that, again, we don't have a dead Savior. We have a living Savior. Amen? Amen. And we're thankful that He did indeed die on the cross for us, but He is living today. He is with us today. Uh, this is not uh, simply a presentation of music on a page and words on a page. It is a presentation from our hearts. And while we want you to be a part of this presentation, ultimately the choir is singing in thanksgiving to Jesus, who gave himself for us, who is risen that we might have life. And we want you to join us in that message of praise and thanksgiving. As you enjoy hearing this music, may all of us together with one voice thank him for what he's done for us on the cross and through the empty tomb. So, Jessica, thank you. And you ask God's blessing on the choir as they give this message to Jesus and to you.
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We have this hope as an anchor for our souls, firm and secure. It is the certainty that, we, that God has done for us in the past guarantees our place in what God will do in the future. Blessed be our Lord Jesus Christ.
we are going to take a few minutes to bow our hearts before God as we hear the message of what he's done for us from the cross to the empty grave. We're going to remember what he did by celebrating the Lord's Supper together. So bow your heart before him. The deacons are going to pass out the elements and then I'll lead us together in a devotion as we celebrate the Lord's Supper together. Today we celebrate a moment that points us forward to Easter. But I want to remind you of this. There could have never been an Easter if there weren't a death on a cross. And today on this Palm Sunday, we remember Jesus dying there. What better day to observe the Lord's Supper than on Palm Sunday 
as it points forward to the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday. So we stop in this moment with the truth that the Lord loves us, that one perfect man, the Son of God, died on the cross to take away the sins of many. In fact, to forgive the sins of millions, billions of people of whom I am one. And so are you. And we're grateful that as we gather here today, we know the Lord loves us, takes care of us, and wants us to remember. It's amazing to me that Jesus says, remember what I did for you. So I want you to take your portion of the Lord's Supper, pull the clear tab, not the purple one, pull the clear tab, and get your bread. Matthew 26, 26, the Word of God tells us this. As uh, they partook, the disciples and Jesus, of the Passover supper, the night before the cross, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body. So as you hold that little bit of bread in your hand, I want you to hold it up with me. It signifies, it symbolizes the body of Jesus and reminds us that his body was broken on the cross and we're never to forget. And we eat all of it. Now if you would take your serving and pull that purple cover back as carefully as you can in that same Passover meal following the bread Jesus said this Matthew 26 27 and then he took a cup and after giving thanks he gave it to them and said drink from it all of you for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. So as we gather here, we hold the cup and this bit of juice reminds us that the blood of Jesus was spilled on the cross that we might be forgiven and that we might have an Easter Sunday to come. Praise God, his blood was spilled for me. Praise God, his blood was spilled for you and every person on this earth. May we drink all of it. Our prayer together as we proclaim Easter to come is that the cross came first, that we might be forgiven. So Pastor Glenn, if you would, lead us in a moment of prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace and your love. Being able to come this day and be reminded again what you chose to do for us to bring us to you. Thank you for the great salvation that you've given to us in Jesus. Thank you for your, your broken body. Thank you for your spilled blood. Thank you for saving us in Jesus' name. Amen. God spoke our world into existence, and in the right time, his word took on flesh and became one of us as Jesus Christ, the Son of God and the Son of Man. For 33 years, he walked the earth. He was tempted, he was tested, he laughed, he cried. He loved the unlovable and touched the unclean. He gave sight to the blind, caused the lame to walk, and raised the dead to life. Then, like a lamb led to the slaughter, Jesus was led away to be hung on a cross at a place called Calvary. He was humiliated. 
He was mocked, he was abused, then he died. And he was buried in a borrowed tomb. He was the blood sacrifice that was required of man to be right with God. He paid our debt so that we can be free from the curse of our own sin. His lifeless body lay in the grave while his followers hid 
afraid, heartbroken. Their minds could not understand why he had left them so soon. He was so young and so beautiful. But on a third day, his body, dead and buried, came alive. Death had lost its power. Death was swallowed up in victory. An angel stationed outside his empty tomb announced the news. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. by this that we are saved. This hope is not wishful thinking or fleeting dreams. It is a reality that we accept by faith. It is the proof that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our God will never leave us or abandon us. He picks us up when we fall. He covers us in the shadow of his wings. He carries us 
when we are too weak to carry on. He is with us through the death of a loved one. He is there through the loss of a job. He is there when the doctor says there is no hope. He is there until we draw our last breath. And he is there to welcome us into eternity with him. Though heaven and earth pass away, we need not fear, for he is there, our living hope.
And bear. 
You know, if this were a worldly performance, we would say thank you for coming and have a safe trip. <laughs> but this is not a worldly performance. This is a, a gift to Jesus Christ. And what I've heard all my life is you never set a beautiful meal on the table and not ask people to come partake. So today, brothers and sisters, for those of us who know Jesus as Lord and Savior, can we simply take a moment in rededicating our lives to say thank you, Lord, that you died on a cross for me and that you rose from the grave that I might have eternal life. And today, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to come to this table and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. The Bible tells us in Romans 3, 23, that all of us sin and all of us fall short of the glory of God. In fact, if there were one person in this world who never sinned outside of Jesus Christ, Easter is not for you. But every one of us who is a sinner needs Easter and needs the cross. And today, if you don't know Jesus, you need the cross and you need Easter and you need the Savior. So in these few moments as we close the service of rededication, perhaps salvation for you. If you're watching on YouTube later this week, perhaps this message is for you. You come and come to this altar and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need you as my Savior. I come to receive you. The greatest gift you could give him in this Easter season is to give your heart to him as a, your Lord and Savior. If you're a believer today and you want to come to this altar and say, Lord, thank you for what you did for me. You come. In the midst of brothers and sisters, you come. But I pray that as we leave this church today, throughout this week and all the weeks that are to come in the rest of our lives, that we will live to proclaim and witness that Jesus is our Lord, our Savior. So let's sing these verses of a rededication, salvation hymn. And if you need him, this altar is open for you to come. Let's stand and sing hymn 376, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. microphone Jeremy as we close the service today God bless you I think wouldn't it be appropriate let's give a, a hand of appreciation and thanks to the director yes. and Jessica Lisa got us through all this music part by part And choir, God bless you, thank you. What a beautiful day in God's house. May we go to live for him and serve him and show his love to others. Let's pray together. Our Father, our God, thank you for this day in your house. This is not my house or anyone's ownership here. It is your house. 
When these doors are open, they're open to anyone who would come to seek Jesus as Lord and Savior. Thank you for the message that we have heard today, Father. It has blessed and touched and changed my heart to be able to hear this old message once again in a new way, that Jesus went to a cross and rose from the grave, that we might have life and life everlasting. Father, I pray that as we go through this week preparing for Easter Sunday, that as we go through the world, we'll perhaps invite someone to come with us, to join with us on Easter Sunday morning in worship together, Lord. Bless us, we pray. We want to leave to honor you and leave to serve you and leave to give our lives to you, Father, that we might love others. We thank you, Lord, and we thank you for this day of worship. In Jesus' precious name and all God's people said.